in this uh, case, uh, I use a various needle because the patient is not yet operate. Uh, I put my first port uh, under the umbilicus. The rule is to incise the skin 50% more than the diameters of the port. This is the rule to avoid to have uh, the skin to stay stuck on the on the port when I enter the port. This is the first rule, 50% more than the diameter. And when we enter the reverse needle, we must enter the reverse needle in one direct movement. If I shake the needle, I cannot feel when I pass inside the peritoneal cavity. Then the movement must be a continuous movement and it must be down 90 degrees from the wall. Okay, I don't enter in, the in the, this direction because like that, I will be more tangential from the peritoneum and I can slide on the peritoneum. Okay, 90 degrees from the wall, I push and I stop when I feel that I enter in the peritoneal cavity. I'm inside, I feel it, no resistance. Now I do a test with the syringe. The first thing that I do is uh, I suck up, I suck the inside the syringe. If I see that I have air who's coming out, I'm inside the a cavity like the colon. If I have blood, of course, I'm inside the vessel. Now I just inject 20 milliliters of air and I try to suck up the gas. If I cannot suck up the gas, I'm inside the peritoneal cavity. If it's possible to remove the gas, I'm in a closed space, and usually it's, uh, it's in the peritoneal space. Now we can connect the gas, and we start with low flow. I lift up the wall, oh, we, okay. okay, we start in low flow, and we wait to have uh, two or 300 milliliters of uh, CO2 inside, and now I check if I have uh, start to inflate uh, inside the, the abdominal cavity. Uh, if you check at this level, it doesn't make sense because at this level you have also the colon. Then if I inflate inside the colon, it will look, uh, uh, it will uh, hear tympanic, but it's not correct. You must check at the level of the liver because at this level I know that I have no colon, then I should have, uh, like here, the tympanism is uh, evident, then I'm sure that I've inflated inside the peritoneal cavity and not inside the bowel, and now we can increase the flow. Oui, on peut augmenter le débit. Tu mets sur high flow. Oui. Merci. As you can see also, we continue to lift up the wall for the moment, because if we release, the needle uh, uh, goes uh, uh, on the tip of the, on the surface of the bowel, and the abdomen can go down, and the tip of the needle can move back and enter inside the muscle wall. We wait to have a little bit more volume. Now we can release the wall and I just maintain the needle. Also because if the needle is inside the omentum, uh, it can be blocked. If I have a hyperpressure, it's uh, the tip is inside the omentum. What I do, I move back and I shake in the axis of the, the needle. I don't turn to make the uh, jam of fruit because uh, I can have bleeder from the momentum, then I just move back in the axis of the needle and I shake it. Now we wait to have enough pressure because uh, if we put the first port without uh, good pressure inside the abdominal cavity, the abdomen resistance is not strong enough to avoid that the wall goes down. And if the pressure is not enough, the abdomen goes down. And when I pass inside with my port, I can touch the bowel behind. Then the rule is normally to have uh, at least 10, milli 10 millimeters stable of pressure before to try to put the first port. The volume of the abdomen is not predictable because in a patient who has a previous uh, pregnancies, of course, it can be higher. In a young man with a strong abdomen, the volume can be low. Of course, uh, if you have a low uh, volume, we know that you have also a small space between the wall and the bowel, then we must be more careful because uh, we have more risk to touch uh, the bowel when we put the first port. Okay, actually, I have a good pressure and the volume is four uh, liters. If I have uh, less than two liters, I know that uh, the space is small, I must be careful. If I have more than 2.5, I know that is a big volume and normally is safe. Here, I prefer to use um, a port with the blade because it's enter more smoothly than a dilating port but it's uh, more a question of self-preference. Uh, I screw to dilate also the wall to enter. 
don't push in the one direction in one movement because it's the best manner to have the wall who goes down and then you can touch something that is important also with the bleed to dilate the the the, the passage when you enter the port i connect the gas and now we enter to look what's happened. The first reflex is to look in the direction of the introduction of the various needle and the port, just to be sure that we don't have any injury. Here it's perfect. We have the well, the question sometimes is uh, to decide uh, in which direction we should do the, the skin incision. Huh? Then the trick that I use, uh, I consider the umbilicus like the center of a circle. I trace a circle around the umbilicus and all my skin incision must be tangential to one circle around the umbilicus. As you can see here, my incision is tangential of one circle uh, around my umbilicus. This rule is true except on the midline. On the midline, we, must, we have to incise uh, vertically, okay? But for all the other one, it must be tangential on the circle. And this is the, the incision that I did on the skin. And I know that just vertically under that one, I'm on the, the epigastric. Je pourrais avoir un peu de dibidil, s'il te plaît, pour nettoyer. I, I know that uh, my umbilical, my uh, epigastric is just under the, this one. Yeah, tu peux prendre la caméra. What I do, I don't enter vertically in this direction because I know that I will arrive inside. I just go a little bit more uh, obliquely and Without vision, if I push in this direction, I should arrive a little bit more medial than my, um, my uh, epigastric artery. You see, the epigastric artery is just located here, and I'm more medial. I'm okay. Basic techniques for the dissection. One technique to dissect is to put tension on the tissue and to use the monopolar coagulation. With that, we can cut the tissue. If you had the monopolar coagulation, the traction on the tissue, and a small surface of contact. If you have a big surface of contact, you cannot cut, you just warm up or you coagulate the tissue. And if you want to cut the tissue, you, must, you have to add these uh, three uh, uh, parameters. You can see small surface of coagulation uh, of uh, contact, tension of the tissue, and I increase my tension step by step with my hand and small surface of contact, okay? There's a basic technique when you use just one direction of traction. You can I open a little bit my scissors to have like a micro spatula, a monopolar coagulation, and I push, okay? The mistake of the beginner is to don't push in the good, ma in the good direction. When you are at this level, you, uh, everybody has a tendency to push down here and they hope that the plinths uh, will be open. In fact, the movement that we must do is an uh, elliptic movement. Uh, ellipse is defined with the uh, two centers, and uh, the two centers of the ellipse must be parallel to the plane that you want to dissect. The plane that we want to dissect is not the rectal plane, it's the vaginal plane. Then is not this movement that we must do, is this movement. We must push inside when we push on the tissue to form the plane, then it's pushing inside and a little bit down, not pushing vertically. If you push vertically, you just dissect the plane of the rectum. It means the plane between the rectum and this fat. And my idea is to form the plane between the vagina and the fat. Then small monopolar coagulation, then I push. We have no risk to enter inside the, the, the rectum when we do that, because we are in the anatomical plane. And it's much faster that if I push vertically, you see? And I just push gently. The coagulation just uh, reduces the risk of small bleeder, but it's a tension and the pressure will show me where is the good plane. When I push one more time, the plane that I want to dissect is the plane of the vagina. Then I don't push in this manner because like that I enter in the bladder. Then I dissect and I push with the elliptic movement with uh, parallel to the plane that I want to dissect and this is the vagina. Basic techniques, if you want to do blunt dissection, we can increase the number of traction. Release a little bit the section. Release. I want to do a blunt dissection here laterally along the, the muscle. If I use two direction of traction, as you can see, it's not really efficient because when I push laterally, 
the tissue is compensated with the movement up. Then I push laterally and the tissue is moved up. Then it to be more efficient, we can increase the number of direction of traction. Can you play the section here? Then the section give one direction of traction. Uh, with my two hands, I give two direction more of traction. You see already that the dissection is more efficient. Then we can descend deeper with the section here. Yeah. If you want, you can also put four direction of traction. I put my grasp. I open my grasp. It gives two direction of traction. I move back my grasp, three direction of traction. I come with the tip of my scissors and I push between four direction of traction. You see that I push one time, it's done. Okay? Then when you do blunt dissection, more you have direction of traction, more the movement will be efficient. Well, basic techniques concerning the needle position. In fact, we have uh, four parameters who will define the position of the needle. You have, of course, right hand, or you can put the needle in the left hand. This is one parameter. The first, the second parameter, you can place the needle in the forehand movement, or you can place the needle in the backhand movement. You can place the needle in two-thirds, one-third, or you can put the needle one-third, two-third. The last parameter is more difficult to understand is 90 degrees from the wall, from the, the needle driver, sorry, it's not completely 90, this is 90 degrees, or 45 degrees, this position, okay? Well, if you want to place in 90 degrees, you take the suture and you pull laterally the needle, you turn a little bit the left one just to present in the perfect manner and then you catch the needle. If you want to have 45 degrees, you have to pull the suture, the tail of the needle in the direction of the camera and then with just additional rotation, you can present the needle exactly in the position to catch it. Okay? To manipulate the needle, you catch the, 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 the side of the, the tip of the needle, traction on the suture, to place more or less the needle as you want. And after, you just add a small rotation on the left side to present the needle to catch it in the perfect shape. Two thirds, one third, forehand, 45 degrees. Okay? Basic techniques concerning the knot. I catch the suture to have the suture who comes, who comes laterally to the needle driver. Never take the suture with the tip who the, with the suture goes on the tip, it must be laterally from the needle. First step, you turn the left hand to have the suture where you must turn around, who is in the direction of the right needle driver. Then the plane of the jaws must be uh, placed in the manner that you can enter in the plane with the right needle driver. Don't place like that. Don't place like that, you have to turn in this position. Of course, we turn around the, the suture who goes from the fixed point to the needle driver, not from the needle drivers to the needle, okay? Fixed point to the needle driver. First turn. Second, traction. When you put the traction, is to place the suture exactly on the same axis as the right needle driver. Not like that, not like that, not like that. Direction of the right needle driver. And the idea of all the technique is to avoid to give any tension on the first on the, the fixed point when you do the knot, because between the first one and the second one, if you put tension on the first one, you will release the first one before to, to close the second one. Then the idea is to do the knot without tension. Rotation, traction to place exactly in the same axis. I turn around and you see that with the suture who goes in direction of my needle driver, it's very easy to turn around. If I place my suture in this manner, it's much more difficult to turn around. I have to place the suture in this axis. Turn around. I move my two hands together because this is a full loop, you see? If you have a full loop, it means that the suture turns completely around the needle driver. It's different than if you have a half loop. This is a half loop. You see, it's like an inverted U. Half loop, full loop. If you have a full loop, the problem is no, you catch the short thread and you fight to remove the short thread from the loop and you cannot do it without uh, tension on the fixed point, okay? If you have uh, a half loop, it's much more easy to come outside the loop, but to maintain the half loop, you have to move the two hands together. 
if you move just the right hand, you have a half loop here, then now it became a full loop. Then don't forget to move the two hands together, then it's still a half loop. I catch the short thread, I slide my left hand close to the fixed point, and I jump over. If you don't do like that, what you will do to pass outside, you will pull tension on the, the short thread to comes out, but you put tension on the first one, on the fixed point. Then the idea to avoid that is at this level, you slide close to the fixed point, you jump over, and then you tight. Okay, to tight is not like your shoes, not left and right, because if you pull left and right, you see that you put tension on the fixed point. The idea is to align the two needle drivers with the, the fixed point in the axis of the left needle drivers. Then I push inside with this one, with the right one, and I pull with the left. Okay, the second one is the most difficult, because if I shake the first one, I will release completely the first one. Rotation of the left hand, traction. Half loop, move my two hands together, I catch the short thread, I slide close the fixed point, I jump over the needle drivers, and I tight. Okay? Oui? Oui? Je t'en prie. Then you see, normal speed, half loop, I move my two hands, slide, jump over, and I tight. Traction, half loop. Ah, I miss the short thread. I jump over, and I tight. Okay? Basic techniques, huh? If you want to do a double knot, basic technique of the double knot, you turn two times, the beginning is the same, huh? you turn the left hand, traction of the suture, you turn two times, you do always a, a double knot for the first one, you catch the short thread, and here to come out, I pull the short thread to the two loops, but when I tie it, I just come back with my right hand, close to the fixed point, to don't have a very long one on the right, and I close my knot. Okay, and I come here, half loop, jump over, and I tight. Okay, I show you a technique if you have tension on the suture and the knot doesn't want to stay close. I have done a first one, that's what I do. I do the second one, I jump over, I pre close, but I don't tight completely. I catch my loop. I reclose my first one, I maintain tension on the short thread to maintain the knot tight, and then I take the long one and I close the second one on the first one. Okay, this is another basic technique, or a little bit more advanced. Then sometimes you don't need to, to pull on the suture. Huh? With the habit, you can feel how the suture or the loop will be down. Oh, this is a uh, bad. How the, the, the loop will be done. You see, I come back here. I feel that the loop will is done in this manner. I turn directly around. Is uh, the 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 feeling of the loop formation, but it's more advanced. Another basic technique here: when you are passing the 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 the, the first passage. You directly replace the needle in the good position. I don't pull completely on my running suture for the moment because it's time consuming. And I just pass uh, three or four times. I replace my needle. I recatch directly. I repass. Now I can catch the tail of my need of my mesh. The tail here on the place where it's not so wide. Just the edge to block in the closure of the peritoneum. And now I can pull. To avoid to destroy the peritoneum, I protect the peritoneum with the, the left needle driver. And I pull with the right. Well, here I have to close the running suture. Then the, for the first one, I look where is the running suture side. The running suture side uh, is uh, on uh, the other side. This is the running suture side, OK? Because when I tight. I do my first one. I don't take on this side. If I take here, I will have a, a running suture will be not completely tight. Then I take a little bit shorter on the side of the running suture, okay? Because now when I tight, I will restretch a little bit the running suture, okay? For the second one, is a little bit different. I catch the tip, the the loop. Tu peux t'approcher un petit peu parce que c'est un peu loin. I jump over, 
as usual, but here before too tight, I open the needle driver to apply the same tension on both sides. I know I have a good uh, knot. If you don't do that, what's happen? what can happen? You take a little bit asymmetrically, or here I, I do that a little bit too much. And when you tight, you see what's happened? You have an additional loop on the knot, and the knot is not completely down. And you have to release, uh, to retight, and then you take the, you waste the time. Then the trick is uh, just half loop. You take the loop, you jump over, and before to tight, you open to have the same tension on both sides. I jump over, I open, and I tight. I go down, and here you can try to use the curvature of the needle like that to pass in the, the, the vagina, but it's uh, difficult to, to master. Then I will show you the best manner for me. Then, as I then I push on the vagina, I turn, and then with the other needle, I help the needle to come out with the other needle driver. And like that, I take exactly the thickness of tissue that I want. If not, it's uh, very difficult to take just the good, uh, the good part of the vagina. You can be true or you can be not uh, deep enough. I push, I turn, then I push. Okay, I pull, I must be careful because it's a 2-0 vicar.